Christy. And Louisa. And we're coming to you with French, French dish. dish from the Chateau Mondomen Winery in the Zelle Negron, uh, just outside of the town of Amboise. An oh, absolutely wow. gorgeous day here, beautiful spring day, and we're going to learn all about uh, the wine coming from Chateau Mondomen. Exactly. And um, also about this beautiful property, which is a historic site. So, Louisa, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the winery and the house here? So, we only bought this house five, just over five years ago. Fred's family, my husband, I'm obviously English. Um, Fred, my husband, is French, and his family have been making wine in and around on West since 1508. So he already had uh, vineyards, uh, like the actual land, but we didn't have the site in which to make the wine. Um, and we s were looking around to settle and uh, make a winery. And we just, one of those crazy, uh, you know, when everything just happens at the right time, this place came up for sale and it was at the right price. And it was just, mm. I obviously, well, we'll show you, it's fell in love with oh, the house, yeah, which is a beautiful off. property. We'll take a look um, at the And house. my husband, after we got out, like we were really, you know, not saying anything in front of the estate agent, because you know, you don't want to like say that you're too keen. <laughs> and then we got in the car and I was like, oh my God, it's the house of my dreams. And then Fred was like, who cares about the house? Did you see the caves? Because for him, that was really all that was <laughs> Yeah, because there are what? There are 17 caves. Ice. Exactly, which you could probably see behind us, but we'll show you those. Yeah, we'll have there. a look at those. So there's like big ones, small ones. This used to be, there's wine been made here um, going back a long time. We don't know exactly, um, but we know that there was wine still made here in the 1940s. And then at some point between the 1940s and the present day, uh, they stopped making wine here. But there was like a, the cave with the original press and everything. Um, and when we bought the property, there was also uh, one hectare of Cabernet Franc above the house. Um, mm. And it's just, you know, w we are natural winemakers. Um, we don't use any pesticides or herbicides. Uh, and then in the winemaking process, we're as, as natural as possible. So it was important for us also to make our wine in natural caves, which is um, a very uh, ecologically conscious way of making wine because uh, you have to have specific temperatures for winemaking. Um, and when you make them in natural caves, that temperature is just normal, like it, it stays cool constant. in there and it stays constant. Whereas if you're in a modern building, obviously in the summer, you have to put in air conditioning, mm -hmm. which is using a lot of electricity. Yes. And then in the winter, you have to heat uh, to keep your temperature constant. Whereas in a natural cave, you're somewhere around 15 degrees all year round. And there are slight variations in that. So in the summer, it can go up four or five degrees. And in the winter, it can go down a few degrees. But actually, Fred really likes that because he says that's also part of the natural cycle of the winemaking year. So in the summer months, at the end of the summer, when we pick the grapes, it's slightly warmer temperature, which means... We're in beautiful caves with uh, the woodberry, the oak, yeah, sorry, the oak and the French oak barrels that are made to measure for us uh, by the Tonelli Russo, uh, which is in Burgundy. So in these wines, the, the idea is we have two really big, uh, in large terms, we have two types of barrels. We have ones which are completely uh, close to the air, so not these ones. Um, so those are made of fiberglass. And then we have ones which are made from wood or uh, cement. And those and ones let lines. air through, uh, through the, the wood or the concrete. Um, so there is like a gentle oxygenation happening throughout the entire uh, fermentation period. So we make different types of wines in this type of cube than we would in the closed environment of a fiberglass tank. Well, in the tasting table, the best place in the whole winery, surrounded by the oak barrels, the cement vats. This is where it all happens. And then we get to have tasting of this wonderful wine because Fred and Louisa have the best wine. <laughs> and a great selection. <laughs> made in heaven my friend and I met because he is not really um, interested in the aesthetic side of the bottle and that's really yeah. what I love to do. And you design the labels. So yeah. I design the labels um, and do kind of the marketing for Mondemen um, and it works really well. And 
Your labels are gorgeous. Very yeah. aesthetically appealing. Draws wow. in the eye. There's always like a whole big story behind why something is called what it's called and why we chose that. And I do hundreds of sketches to do. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
okay, the, the way that people always explain it, like, tell me that they, the way they feel about this wine is that this is a rosé for people who don't like rosé. So, and so then the very last bottle that I'm going to show you, which is not by any means the last of the bottles that no. we have, it's just what I'm showing you, um, is a Chardonnay, which is called the Ballade des Dames, and uh, this is the very first wine that I ever made. I was the winemaker of this wine. Yay! So my husband effectively got a little bit bored with me asking too many questions and wanted to know too much about how he was making wines. And he said, look, just do one yourself. You, you can have a go. So he guided me, but this was my very first attempt. So we picked this with a group of girlfriends in September. Um, is this a, this is from what year? Uh, so this is the 2019. So we okay. then have re since made the 2020, which is still in the, the barrique. Okay. Um, so this is a Chardonnay, which I would say, it, so it was aged in oak, but it doesn't taste like those oaky, full-bodied Chardonnays that you are probably used to drinking. Uh, we are in a, a kind of colder climate than yes. most Chardonnays like. Mm -hmm. um, so you have much more light and fruity tones. Um, and although it is aged in oak, you don't get any of, the, it's not new oak, so you don't get any of that heavy, oaky, buttery flavor. Right. Um, and then this also is a label that I um, made a liner cut and then had printed onto the bottle. So this is 100% me. Yeah. Okay. So thank you to Thanks Louisa Lou, to Mon Domaine. And uh, that's a wrap for French that's Dish. Wrap. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. See you soon at Chateau Mont Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you.